Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to add levels and teleporting to a 2D platformer game in Unity. In this project, I have two different scenes which are acting as two different levels in the game. And I want the player to be able to teleport from one level to the next. So to get this to work, the first thing you're going to need to do is to create more than one level or more than one scene. So uh, I have my first level here as a scene. And what I've actually done is in my scenes folder here is I've added a second level and there's a couple of ways that you can do this. So you can either click on file and then click on new scene and you can build a whole new scene in your project. Or what you can do is open up a scene that you've been working on that you've been building and then click file, save as, and then save a copy of that scene uh, with a different name. And that's actually what I've done. So I've worked on level one, which I have open here, and I built up this scene. And then what I did was saved it as level one, but then saved uh, another copy and called it level two. And then I opened up that level two scene and I just edited the scene just to change it. So what that meant was I didn't need to add the player again. I didn't need to add um, every single object to that scene again, like platforms and trees and things like that. All I needed to do was delete what I didn't want in that second scene and add what what I did want uh, and, and just make some changes so it looked like a different scene. So now I have level one and level two. And what I'm going to do in level one is I'm going to add a uh, portal at the end here. So when the player reaches the end of this level, they'll teleport through a portal to uh, the start of level two. And I also want to have a portal at the start of level two so the player can get back to level one if they want to. Once you've added your scenes or levels uh, and you have multiple scene files, what you'll need to do is go into your build settings for the project. So click file and build settings. And uh, in the build settings, you should be able to see the scenes in build. Right now, I only have level one listed. So what you need to do is go and open each scene in your project and then click add open scenes. So now I can see both level one and level two are listed as scenes in this build. And each scene can be rearranged. So you can change the order of the scenes and they each have an index or number. Okay, and that's important because we're going to use that later to be able to cycle through the scene. So if we're on level one, we can just go to, uh, which level one has an index of zero. So what we can do is just increase uh, the, basically just go to the next uh, index or next level number uh, in this build. Okay, so we'll look at that a little bit later. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a uh, portal to this scene. And uh, I'm actually using the free pixel space platform pack by Aiden Art, which is available on the Unity Asset Store. So I'm going to, uh, I've imported that um, asset pack and I'm gonna find a portal. I'm gonna use this one and just scale that down because it's a bit too big. And just position that on the platform there. Okay, so the player will be able to walk through this platform and then uh, teleport into level two. What I'm going to need to do is add a collider. So just search for collider and I'm going to choose a box collider 2D. Make sure that is trigger is checked um, because I want to detect when the player has passed through this box collider. And then I'm just going to edit the size of this collider to be the size of the portal. Oops. And I'm actually just going to edit the left side so it's sort of halfway through this, it's in the middle of this sprite. What that means is if the player's walking along here, uh, they're not going to teleport straight away as soon as they hit the edge of this portal, they're gonna teleport once they kind of get in the portal in the middle of it. Okay, so just edited that collider like that. Then what you'll need to do is tag this portal to distinguish uh, when 
the player is colliding with this object um, from when the player is colliding with other objects like spikes or checkpoints or the fall detector. Okay, so I'm going to, I've got this portal selected in the inspector panel here. I'm going to add a new tag and I'm actually gonna add two new tags. I'm going to add one called next level and I'm going to add another one called previous level. Okay, so these two tags will be used for two different types of portals. One for when you wanna to get to the next level and one for when you wanna get back to the previous level. Okay, I'll select that portal again and I'm going to assign the tag next level. Okay, I'm gonna save that scene. And I've just realized I'm actually in level two, so, um, and I don't have a level three, so I'll go back to level one and basically do the same thing. So I'm gonna add a, uh, a portal here. Drag that in just here. And just position that on the top of the platform. Okay, so this is in level one. Again, I'm gonna add a box collider uh, and just edit that. To the size that I want. And uh, make sure that I have is trigger checked and I'm gonna add that tag of next level. Okay, so basically what I have now, and I'll make sure that I save that scene as well, is right here in level one, I have a, a portal um, that is tagged as next level. So, and it's got a box collider with is trigger ticked. So when the player reaches the end of level one, I want them to pass through this portal and then it's going to take them to the beginning of level two and they'll spawn over here. And then when they reach the end of level two, um, there's another portal here, which is also tagged next level, has a box collider with is trigger checked, and that will take them to level three. I don't actually have level three built yet. Um, so to get that to work and to not have any errors um, occur in the game, I'll need to now make a level three as well. I'm not gonna do that now though. What I will do is add another portal and in fact, I can just duplicate this portal in level two. So I'm just gonna click on that portal and press Command D um, and to duplicate, or I could just right click and select duplicate. So now I've got this portal, which is going to be at the start of level two, not where the player spawns though. We don't want the player to be touching the portal when this uh, scene loads, otherwise they're gonna um, teleport back to level one again. But on this portal at the start of this level, I'm gonna change its tag to previous level. Okay, so it's tag previous level, which means when the player goes through this portal, they'll teleport back to level one. Okay, so the scene is set up now. I've got some portals to go between level one and, and two and back and forth. Um, I can spend a little bit more time creating another scene for level three and, and build that up, um, but I'll do that later. What I'm going to do now is write some code to get this teleporting to work. So I'll go into my scripts folder and open up the player controller script, which is responsible for player movement and um, some collision detection. And in the previous uh, videos, previous two videos, I added this code here for detecting uh, collisions. So on trigger enter 2D. This method here is called or runs when the player uh, collides or passes through or enters the collider of another object. So we check you know, if the player falls through the fall detector, then they respawn back to the um, their respawn point. Otherwise, if they reach a checkpoint, um, the respawn point is updated. So if you're not sure how to do that, you can go back and watch the previous two videos. But all I need to do here now, because I have this method set up for collision detection, all I need to do is now just add a couple more if statements that check 
um, if I've collided with the, the um, an object tagged as next level or if I've collided with an object tagged as previous level and then just either go to the next scene in the list of scenes or go to the previous scene. So in here, I'm going to say else if, and I'm going to say collision dot tag is equal to next level. Okay. And then I'm also going to add another else if I can just copy and paste that one. And this one is going to be previous level. All right, so we check if uh, we've collided with an object that's tagged next level, or if we've collided with an object that's tagged previous level. Um, and that's what the, the portals are tagged is either next level or previous level. All right, before we can uh, load another scene in the game, what we need to do is go to the top of the script and just need to make sure that you've got this line of code there. So using Unity Engine dot scene management. And you'll need that line of code to work with the different functions for loading scenes. So if you don't have that line of code here yet, um, I added it earlier. Just make sure that you type that in at the top of your code. Now what we can do is when the player has passed through a portal that's tagged next level, um, we can say scene manager dot load scene. Scene manager dot get active scene and then open close parentheses dot build index plus one. Okay, so what this means is and I've just saved that script. And if I go back into Unity, what this means is if we just go back and have a look at the build settings. Remember that we have this list of scenes in the game. So level one and level two, and we could add, if we create a level three, we could also add that here as well. But each of these scenes has an index or number. Okay, so if we are in level one, then we are in uh, scene zero or index zero. And if we're in level two, then we're up to index one. And then level three would be index two, uh, level four would be index three and so on. Okay, so if we're currently in uh, level one, which is scene index zero, then if we add one to that, then we're going to load the next level. Okay, so basically we're just finding out what scene index we, or what scene we're currently in and what its index is, and then we're just increasing that by one to load the next scene. Okay, now to load the previous scene, just copy and paste that line of code and we would just decrease by one. All right, so that would go back to the previous scene in the list. Okay, um, one thing you might also wanna do is just uh, update the respawn point as well. So I'm going to say respawn point equals transform dot position after the player has teleported. So um, if the player teleports to the next level, uh, immediately after they've teleported, the respawn point will be updated to where they spawn in that scene. All right, so that's important because if the player dies in that scene or falls off one of the platforms, uh, we don't want the player to respawn to uh, the last respawn point that was saved in the previous level. We don't want them to go to that position. Um, so copy and paste that. We'll add that here as well. So that will work for both scenes. The respawn point is updated to where they teleport to in that, that next level. Okay, you'll need to save that code. And now we can go and test that out. Um, just need to make sure that I load level one first. All right, and remember this script is attached to the player, which is in both of these scenes or both of these levels. So it's, it's going to work um, for both levels. Let's run the game. All right, so I'm just gonna move around this scene. Oops. Reach the end of level one. And as soon as I hit this portal and pass through it, I teleport into level two. 
And then I could go along level two and explore that. Or if I want to go back to level one, I can go back to level one. Okay. Uh, so what will happen is if I just go back to level two again, let's see what happens when we get to the end of level two. because we don't actually have a level three yet. So if I reach the uh, portal here, you'll see there's an error message that's just popped up. We go to the console, it says scene with build index two couldn't be loaded because it has not been added to the build settings. So um, you just need to make sure that if you're gonna have a portal that in level two to take you to level three, you need to make sure that level three exists and it's been added to the, um, in the build settings, that it's been added to the list of scenes there um, by going into level three and then clicking add open scenes. Okay, so what I'll need to do now is just go and add a third level and um, to make sure that we can fix that error and um, allow the player to teleport to level three. One last thing that I'll just mention here is that you might have noticed that when I um, go from level two uh, back to level one, that I'm actually teleporting back to the very beginning of level one rather than you know maybe just to where the portal was at the end of level one. Okay, so you can change this code. You can actually um, also jump from one specific scene to another specific scene rather than just the next one in the list. And if you want to do that, you can use this line of code instead. So you can say scene manager dot load scene. And then between parentheses, you can just specify the specific index or scene number that you want to load. So, you know, if I wanted to specifically go to level one here and specifically go to level zero or scene zero, index zero, uh, then I could use that line of code instead. So if you had maybe different portals in a scene that would take you to other specific scenes, then you could just refer to the specific index number of that, that scene. Okay, and then what you could also do is you could just have different um, tags for each portal. And then instead of um, specifying the respawn point uh, to whatever the position is of the player, you could specify uh, a very a specific respawn point and then move the player to that position um, so that each scene has its own specific respawn point when you're teleporting back and forth between scenes. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna uh, undo that code because the existing code worked fine for the way that I've set this up. That's it for this video. Uh, in the next few videos, what we're gonna start looking at is adding collectibles and scoring to the game. And we'll also look at um, creating a UI to display score. We could add health as well. Um, and then we'll start looking at some particle system effects as well and sound effects and, and how to really um, improve this game and make it a polished 2D platformer game. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.